Hey everyone, just a quick update. Um, we've been busy recently because I'm trying to get my Japanese driver's license, so I've been doing lots of practice for that, and we just had some other stuff, like with the summer break coming up. We've been a little busy, so um, we haven't had time to do updates on YouTube for a little while. Sorry about that. So please enjoy this video of our garden progress and we re we've been harvesting stuff for a few weeks now so you can see pictures of that enjoy <laughs> mm. over this for the melons go I think I'm going to take this one off just because it's really nice mm. looking. Oh, here's a big one back here. Mm -hmm. Here. Oh, bigger. Yellow stick. I think Pa would have called this butter oh. stick. Mm. Mm. So yeah, we could have this for dinner. After doing a bit more research, we set out to make a few improvements on our layout. Our things had recently arrived from America, and in my book collection was a book I'd bought in Japan before called Hajimete no Yasai Tsukuri, which is about growing vegetables for beginners. In this book are a lot of useful tips and depictions of farming methods and techniques, so I got tons of ideas from here for various different vegetables and how to grow them. One of the most important things we learned and were warned about by some of the other gardeners at this community lot is how important weed control is. Now, I'm no stranger to weeds, having grown up on an organic farm. Okay, However, I me? might have underestimated just a tiny bit how bad the weeds would get here. Japan, at least our part of Japan in the Kansai region, is subtropical. So it's incredibly hot and humid, which tends to make everything explode with life. This includes not only plants, but bugs as well. Originally, I had wanted to try not using the black plastic method of covering the raised beds. However, when I noticed most of the other gardeners using it, I started to become a little suspicious. If everyone was using black plastic, maybe that was a sign. So I quickly changed my tune and we put down the plastic sheets over the remaining beds. We didn't cover everything as some of the plants had already been established by the time I realized this. But in hindsight, I wish I had covered all of them. For the other beds, I had to make do with laying down straw. This has been doing the trick to some extent and certainly looks nicer than just bare soil. However, as you may notice, especially later on, the weeds still poke up through it and I've actually had to go back a few times to add new layers. Here we're just preparing another raised bed which we're going to plan to put melons in. Go. Make sure that line is centered. It's kind of off center. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now Leo, pin it in the middle. Wait, wait, I think it needs to be pulled over more this way. Like, see, it's not covering that area so well. Yeah, I, I guess we pinned it wrong earlier. Okay, now put one in the middle, Leo. There's no more of these pegs left, so this is all we've got. Yeah, everyone else used them all. Yeah. Oh, here, over here, this area. Okay. We've been getting seedlings from the local home center rather than growing everything from seed. 
and I've noticed that they put out the plants according to the appropriate time to put them in the ground. Here we planted several different kinds of melons, as I love melons in the summer and they're very expensive to buy. We plan to plant sweet potatoes in the space I'm preparing now, as the rainy season was starting and they like a lot of water in the beginning of their growing journey while they get established in the ground. See what I'm doing? This, this shovel is like good for making a straight edge. So like you just dig it down in a line like this. And, ugh. This is also a sweet gauze, so let's put the sweet gauze together. This is what? Makuudi. Oh, makua udi. Hey, udi is melon? I don't know. And prince melon, so this is like a cantaloupe. I think this is like a green melon. Okay, so we're gonna put it here. Here. So we're gonna cut this. But they like made it a line lined it up for you <laughs> for the middle of the row. Okay, there's actually two in there, so we're gonna put one more here. These will get big though, so in that space. And then there's probably enough room to put one other thing there. Okay, so I cut the hole. Right big. In here. Okay. And we're going to mix a little bit of this organic fertilizer. Melons, which I'm planting here, are quite heavy feeders, so we put a scoop of organic fertilizer into each hole before planting. Then we water with an organic fertilizer I found at the home center. Yeah, I want to make a set of like these done here. It's cute. A little okay. bit more. More. A little bit more, Liam. Okay. This one, oh. Part. Okay, so we're now that we planted the melons, melons are heavy feeders, so they need a lot of fertilizer. So we got this organic like vegetable and fruit fertilizer, and I'm just gonna pour some into this watering can and mix it. How much do we need? Okay. And mix that up like this. Water. Okay. And then we gotta put hay over this too. Oh, mm. the water's running down. We try to come by every few days and always on the weekend if it's not raining to water the plants. The garden we are renting at has a lot of other activities and you can see there's lots of kids running around and playing in the background. Let me show them what you found. We found a four leaf clover. 
can you see it? <laughs> Slowly but surely, things were starting to come together. A special thing I noticed is that every time we'd come, there was always a ladybug on this eggplant. It would always be on the exact same leaf, to the point that I wondered if it was even real. Rebe loves ladybugs, so I took it as a good sign of things to come. But then the rain came, and with the rain, the infamous weeds. Despite the explosive growth, our first zucchini and summer squash were starting to develop, as well as our daikon radishes. Daikon prefer to grow in cooler temperatures, so if left too long, they will turn woody. It hadn't quite gotten that hot yet, so it was the perfect time to harvest them and pull a ton of weeds. It's been about two weeks since we visited our garden, and as you can see, the weeds exploded because the rainy season started. And I just wanted to show you something really magical. So every time we've come here since we planted this plant, we always see this ladybug on this leaf, on this eggplant. I don't, it's definitely alive because I just touched it and it moved. So I don't know, but I guess it made this eggplant its home. <laughs> Actually, this, this is like kind of starting to get old. You can see the aging on it. So yeah, it was really 70 days, or mm -hmm. 60 days, I guess. Almost exactly two months since we started this garden and we're finally about to have our first real harvest. So we've got some big zucchinis on the plant here, although I'm seeing blossom and rot here. That's not good. But um, we got our big zucchini. We had a lot of rain. It was the rainy season. So these zucchinis seem to have done well. Actually, it's kind of even getting old. So hey, here you go. We're just going to take a couple today. Maybe. Putting his I better get this one off because it's got blossom and rot on it. That's not good. So we got this snazzy little tool from the home center. It's for harvesting vegetables. I've never seen a tool like this in America, so I like using this. But looks like this has got blossom and rot on it, which is not a good sign. So we're gonna have to watch these plants. I think I'm gonna take this one off. Just Each one we've picked has been a different shape, so that's kind of interesting. These are salad daikons, so they're kind of smaller. Maybe I'll get two in that case. Because... Oh, it's like a little person. Maybe look, maybe look. It's a little daikon person. You want to take this one? Look, he's got little legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
Where did they get those celery? So big. Oh, these are so thin. Yeah. Look. 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 Mmm, oh, you see? Mmm, I might. Way better than the grocery store stuff. One of the best things about this experience is that our kids can take part in growing their own food and spending time outdoors. It's only been a couple of months, but so far we've been able to harvest all these things and not had to buy them from the grocery store. They're healthy and delicious and don't require as much work as you'd think. I call that a win. Uh, Lily, what are you holding? Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more of our adventures, we'd love it if you subscribed, liked, share, and enjoy. Until next time, bye.